future superheroes of Circuit Python. This is Prof G, and welcome back to Circuit Python School. In this lesson, we're going to paint the rainbow, and we'll do that by harnessing the power of the lists data structure. We'll also learn how to import predefined colors, and we'll learn all sorts of useful tips and tricks. So let's learn. So for the start of this lesson, let's head into the REPL. And we've learned about tuples, which are sequence values in Python between parentheses with the values separated by commas. We've used these with colors. For example, if we say red equals, and then in parentheses, 255 comma zero comma zero, that is a tuple. The way we express colors in CircuitPython is with a tuple with three values inside. But there are other powerful sequences in Python. This one here is called a list. And instead of parentheses, you place values in a list between brackets. We use commas to separate the elements in the list, just like with tuples. And we access individual elements in the list by using square brackets and then an index number, also like tuples. And like tuples, lists are zero indexed as well. So the first element is at index zero. The last element is at an index equal to the number of elements in the list minus one. So here I've got a list named messages. It has four elements. This list is composed entirely of strings separated by commas. And if you look at the message at index zero, that is you are fantastic. That's the first element in the list. And the message at index three is the fourth element in the list. That's the last element. And that is you are awesome. Now you can also use the len function on lists. Remember we learned about that before. That gives you the length of a list or the number of elements in the list. So let's build a list in the REPL. Now we'll create the list that we saw on the previous slide. That's a list named messages that has a bunch of strings that describe you. So we'll say messages equals and then in square brackets because lists are in square brackets. And then in between double quotes, you are fantastic, comma, you are great, comma, you are amazing, comma, you are awesome. Each phrase is in between double quotes, separated by commas, and we close off our list with a closing square bracket. So if we say messages and then in between square brackets at index one, that gives you our great, which is the second element because remember we're zero indexed. And we can calculate the last element in the list regardless of the size of the list by saying messages and then in between brackets, L-E-N and in parentheses messages. But remember to subtract one because we're zero indexed. The very last element is the length of the list or the number of elements in the list minus one. And of course we get, you are awesome. And you are awesome for putting together that statement in CircuitPython. Nice work. Now, one of the things that makes lists different than tuples is with lists, you can add or delete or reorder elements in a list. You can't do that with tuples. So if you create a tuple like colors that has three elements in it, it's always gonna have three elements. But let's go ahead and add an element to our messages list. We can do that with the append method. So we'll say messages.append and then in between parentheses, remember methods are functions and functions have parentheses. And we're gonna pass in the element that we wanna add to the list. How about in quotes, fabulous, that's you. Press Turn. Then I'll press up arrow twice to pull up the second to last command that I typed in. That's this one that will give me the very last element in my list. I'll press return. And look at that. The very last element is now fabulous. That's you. Good work. And if you do a len messages, that gives you five because you just added an element. So there are five elements in the list. And you might wonder, hey, that append function is kind of cool. How can I find out other functions that are available for things in CircuitPython? Well, one way is by using the help command. So if I type help at the prompt and in between parentheses, I type in messages, well, messages is a list. And what I'll see when I press return is a list of all of these different methods or functions that can apply to a list. So I see from the top, they're listed alphabetically, append, clear, copy, count, extend, index, insert, pop, remove, reverse, sort. Now I wish there was more help in here, there's not. Some of these are self-explanatory. Sort, for example, will sort the list. But the help feature can be great for jogging your memory. If you see something that looks interesting, you can search online and find more examples of how to use a particular method. So now you know you've got this help function that you can take advantage of in the REPL, and that lists are significantly more powerful than tuples. And you can make lists of all sorts of data types. For example, if you want to enter grades, well, I can say grades equal, and then in between brackets, I can put in decimal values or float values. So let's say 80.5 comma 91.0 comma 70.0 comma 88.5, close with a square bracket bracket. And CircuitPython has some additional functions that you can leverage. So for example, if I want to sum up those grades, I can just say sum and in parentheses grades, and then I can divide by the length of the number of elements that are in the list named grades. And that gives me the average, and the average is 84.5. Now, many versions of Python also have a mean function, which gets an average of a list that you would pass in. That's just not available as a core function in CircuitPython. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is that we can actually make a list that contains colors. That's right, you can put tuples or any other data structure inside of a list. So if we're going to work with our colors and our lights on our CPB, why don't we highlight these first four lines of the code and copy them, paste them into the REPL that'll import three of our most important libraries, and it will set up a value pixel 
pixels, which points to the 10 lights that are on our CPB. Now let's create colors for red, green, and blue. So red equals in parentheses 255 comma zero comma zero, green equals in parentheses zero comma 255 comma zero, and blue equals in parentheses zero comma zero comma 255. I can create a list of these colors by saying colors equals, and then in square brackets, red comma green comma blue. Now if I wanted to access the last element in the list, I could say pixels dot fill, and then in parentheses, colors bracket two, and close bracket and close parentheses. That's not super useful, but it does show you that you can access individual elements of the list, the different colors, and I turn my CPB blue. Something more interesting would be if we continue to loop through all the colors in our list. So why don't we do that with a while true loop? We can say while true colon. Then when we press return, we indent and for I in range, L-E-N, colors, close with two parentheses, colon, press return, we indent again. Now we're entering the statements that are part of the for loop. And the statements we want to execute inside the for loop are pixels.fill in parentheses, colors, and then in brackets, I, close parens. So that should make sure that we go through and we fill in all of the pixels with the individual color that's in the colors list at position I. And then in the next line underneath here, still in the for statement, we'll say time.sleep and in parentheses 0.5. So we'll wait half a second after we flash each of the individual colors. Then when we press return, if we press delete and delete and then press return, our code continues to execute over and over again. And we see that we're flashing our different colors, red, green, blue, this looks great. And if you wanna break this infinite loop that's in the REPL, you just press control C. Now we could create a bunch of colors by typing in the tuples with the three values, but the fine folks who maintain CircuitPython realize, hey, this is something that most people wanna do. So there's a library that contains named colors that we can import and leverage. And it's a library called Adafruit underscore LED underscore animations. Now you can search online to find a learn guide that's on the Adafruit site about this library. The library itself was written by the fabulous Katni Rembor. Here are the color names that have been predefined inside this library. And if you wanna take advantage of the library, you've gotta make sure that your lib folder has these two libraries. We've already imported both Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation and NeoPixel.mpy, so we're in good shape. Now, in order to take advantage of the color module, which is inside of the Adafruit LED animation library, we use the statement import Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation and then dot color to bring in the color module. When we press return, that module and all those colors are imported. So I could then say pixels dot fill and then in parentheses Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation dot teal. Actually, no, this is going to give me an error. I forgot dot color for the module name after Adafruit LED animation, so I'm gonna up arrow and I'm gonna add dot color after Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation and then dot teal after that. And when I press return, we can see that the CPB turns teal. Now having to write the fully qualified name Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation dot color dot teal is pretty cumbersome, but there's another trick that we could use in order to be able to get just that qualified name teal and to be able to use that as a variable in our program. Let's do that with the color magenta. What we do is we leverage the from statement. So we say from and then the name of the library and then in this case dot the module we want to use. So that's Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation dot color. And then we can say import and we can pull in just the data structure that we want to use from this module inside of the library. So we're not pulling in all of the data structures that are defined. And if I go back to that web page that lists all of those colors, and so why don't we use magenta? So if I type magenta and press return here, now we can refer to just magenta in our code. We don't have to fully qualify the name like we did up here with Adafruit underscore LED underscore animation dot color dot teal. Instead, we can say pixels dot fill and in brackets magenta, press return, and our CPB turns magenta. Now we've only imported the color magenta. Now we could use a similar from statement entering another line for each of the colors that we want to import, but there's another way to set this up that involves less typing than having to type out this whole complete line for each color. And since this is such a common thing to write in code, import predefined colors so that you can refer to them by name, I've written out the code in a Google Doc so that you can just copy and paste this block of code whenever you want to use predefined color names. So you can find this document at bit.ly slash circuitpython, all one word, all lowercase, dash colors, again, all lowercase. Just as you see it here on screen, that's the URL. This will pull up this document so you can highlight this code here, copy it, and why don't we return to Moo and use this in a Python program? So I'm gonna get out of the REPL, I'll type Control D and then hide the serial console, and I'm gonna paste the code that I just copied right after my import time statement. And you see that we have the from statement that's gonna import all of these colors. The last element is rainbow. This isn't an individual color. It actually says here it's a list of colors, red, orange, 
orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So why don't we use that first to see how that works. So now in our code, because I have all of these colors, I can go ahead and delete the colors that I had defined myself previously. I also don't need these lines after I define pixels and before the while true. And I'm going to delete everything underneath the while true as well. So first, why don't we cycle through filling in our CPB with all the lights showing each of the individual colors that are in this color list named rainbow. So in our while true, we can say 4i in range, and then in parentheses, let's get the length of rainbow so that we go through that entire list and then end with two parentheses and a colon. And then we'll say pixels.fill in parentheses rainbow and then square bracket i, close square bracket, close paren. And what that's going to do is it's going to pick up each individual color that's in this rainbow list that we're iterating through. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Now after this pixels fill, let's make sure that we pause. So why don't we say time.sleep and why don't we pause for 0.3 seconds. So why don't we pull up our serial console to make sure that we don't have any errors when we save our code to run it. And we'll save. And look at that. We're cycling through the rainbow. Looks fantastic. So that's good, but what if we want to build our own list of colors? For example, when I look at this rainbow, well, this isn't the Roy G. Biv that I learned about in grade school. So I'm going to create a new value called colors, and I'll set that equal to, and I'll create my own list. Red, comma, orange, comma, yellow, comma, green, comma, blue, comma, and there isn't an indigo, but I'm going to type in indigo anyway, and we'll create our own indigo, and we can use that in the list along with these other predefined colors. Comma, and then there's violet at the end. Well, there's no violet in here. Why don't I just go ahead and use purple instead of violet, though? And then if I want to create my own custom color that wasn't defined as part of the library modules colors, I can type in indigo equals and in parentheses, and I know I want to use the values 63 comma 0 comma 255 for indigo. And you know what? With my colors list here, I'm going to go wild and add a whole bunch of colors. We'll add some circuit python colors. We'll define another one of our own. So I can add jade, which is included as a color in between green and blue. And I'm going to type in violet in between indigo and purple. I need to create violet. And why don't we add magenta right after red? And magenta and jade are defined by the library, but violet isn't. So under indigo, I'm going to define violet equals 127 comma 0 comma 255. And let's add the color black at the end of this list too. This will let us cycle through all the different colors and black will effectively turn off all of the lights in the list too. So we can cycle through again after shutting everything off. Then if I want to use my new colors list, I can highlight the rainbow list that I was referring to before, backspace over that, type in colors. Now this pop-up shows you a little bit of the danger in naming values. So it turns out that the Adafruit module actually has a value called color. So by naming something colors, I've got to be really careful that I don't mix up Adafruit's color with my colors. If I wanted to, I could try to choose a variable name that was more distinctive, maybe my colors or something like bigger rainbow, but I'll leave colors in, but just pay very close attention to the fact that I need to type in colors when I want this list, not color. And if you did choose a name that was already defined, you'd get an error in circuit Python that said something like a value with that name has already been defined. So now with rainbow gone and colors in there as our list, let's open our serial monitor and save. And look at that. We're cycling through all the colors in the list, all 11 of them, red, magenta, orange, yellow, green, jade, blue, indigo, violet, purple, and black, which clears things, turns them all off. And then we start again with red from the beginning. Nice work. So for our challenge, we're going to paint the rainbow. We're going to put a rainbow of NeoPixels on our CPB. So we're going to use the colors that we have defined, and we're going to write code to light up the first light in our CPB with the first color in our colors list, the second light with the second color, the third light with the third color, and we'll keep going through all of the pixels, matching them up with a different color in the colors list so that each individual light in our CPB is a different and distinct color. We're going to wait three tenths of a second after each light is lit. Then when all the lights are lit up, we're going to turn off all the lights. We're going to wait three tenths of a second again, and then we're going to repeat right from the beginning. So be sure to use a len function. You don't want to hard code any literals in your while true loop. So why don't you give this a shot? Pause. And let's resume and compare answers. So when you think about it, we don't have to make too many changes to our code. We do want to make sure that we're not using pixels.fill though. Since we want to fill in the individual pixels, we're going to backspace over fill and instead we're going to say pixels bracket i bracket and that's going to be equals. Remember this is how we turn on an individual light in our pixels group. And then we'll keep colors bracket i bracket but we'll get rid of the closing parenthesis at the end. Now here's another thing that we want to do. We don't want to cycle through all the colors in the colors list because there are actually more colors than there are lights in our CPB. 
So there are only 10 lights in the CPB, but we've got 11 colors in our colors list. So what we're going to do is instead of going through the length of colors, we'll go through the length of pixels. This way we'll never try to light up a pixel that doesn't exist. We'll never get an index out of range error. And that's it, my friends. So why don't we open the serial console? We'll click on save. And will you look at that? We're painting the rainbow called the Skittles Company. We've got a bunch of delectable colors, one in each of the lights on our CPB. Excellent work, folks. And once again, we had more big learning in this lesson. We covered importing new libraries, getting just the elements we want from import. We specifically used the library Adafruit LED animations and the color module inside of that library. We got some sample code that we could reuse anytime that you want to bring in named colors for your projects. We worked with lists, a new and powerful type of sequence, and we learned how to use help in the REPL. And we continue to confirm your own personal awesomeness. I hope you're feeling the power of Python pulsing through your veins. Keep at it, coder. See you in the next lesson.